Hey guys, Greg here of Let's Solve Max Area of Island, lead code number 695. So we're given an M by N binary matrix grid. So binary matrix means the values are either zero or one, and they're represented as integers. So we have an M by N binary matrix grid, and an island is a group of ones representing land connected four directionally, so either horizontal or vertical. And we can assume all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water. Okay, so all the blues or the zeros are water and all of the ones are land. Whenever we have a group of horizontally or vertically connected land, like these ones right here, we have islands. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six different islands, but that's actually not the goal of this problem is to count the number of islands. We need to return the maximum area of an island. And if there is no island, AKA literally the entire grid is just zeros or water, well, you'd return zero because you don't have any. So this island has a size of of one here, this one has a size of four, this is four, this one's a five, this one is shaped like a four, it really resembles a four, uh, but there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six different ones here. So the area of this island is six, and this one's a five. So we'd want to return the area of the biggest island, which is this one, and so that would be your output of six. And the grid is represented simply as a list of lists. So we'd have M rows, and you'd have in any of these, we'd have N many columns. Okay, so we're given this board here and we could calculate that M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. In this case, it is actually a five by six. You can see five rows and six columns. So all of the row indices are marked by zero, one, two, three, up until four. So the grid at zero would be basically this row of information. The grid at one would be this row and so on. And the column indices would be basically any of these ones. So we could index any of these positions, say like grid two at one, for example. So that's going to mark this row. This is going to mark this row. And then if you take the one column out of that, that's gonna particularly mark this spot here. Okay, but I'm just gonna keep it fresh here. So we're looking for the max area. So we'll keep track of this as a variable. We'll just call it max A and set that to be zero because if you iterated the board and you didn't find any ones, then we could just return that because that's what they wanted. So we'll set that to be zero. We'll iterate through the board. We see nothing here. We see nothing here. We're looking for ones and then boom, we found one right here. Now at this point, we are going to do a DFS for everything that this one is connected to. And the DFS does two things. One, it actually returns the value of the area of the island. This one, it's not going to show it very well because it's just a solo, but it's going to be one. This island is just one. And the second thing it does is it's going to destroy the island, aka it's going to turn it into water. And that's not so clear why we need to do that yet. But as you'll see for this example, it's going to be really important. Okay, so we do a DFS there. It doesn't really do much. And this thing is effectively dead here. This is water. Now we iterate through looking for land. We don't find any until we get over here. Now now recursion solves the problem very nicely here of returning the total area, which is four, by breaking it down into recursive subproblems. The area of this whole island here, well, if we're currently looking at this position here, well, then the area of the whole island is one, because this guy is a one, plus the recursive call on its neighbors. And that's gonna work because you can also keep doing that. And so this guy's neighbor is gonna allow us to get to here, and that's gonna get us our total answer of four there. So basically how it works is that we we would see this position here, just like we did over here. We want to mark that as a zero because we never want to visit this position again. Because once you then say, let's go over here to see this neighbor, we don't want this guy to think that we can go back here. No, if we did that, we'd kind of ping pong back and forth forever. We immediately mark it as a zero. And then we also call it on its neighbors here. So basically I'll show you in the code, but the recursive call is going to be, well, the whole area of the island is one because because one of these is a one plus the recursive call on all of its neighbors that would then go and search out everything. And so that would get basically a bunch of ones. And so that's going to return your total answer of four there. And it's also going to kill the entire island. So it would get the area of the island of four and it would also mark it as an ocean so that you never have to visit that again. Okay, so basically all of those are gonna be zeros and then we'd see a new max area and that's going to be marked as four. We would then carry on our iteration. And then when we see this guy here in the iteration, because remember we're iterating through the grid, we stopped and did our DFS at this guy here. When we go over here, the next position, we are not going to do the DFS again because we already did that for the island. We only do it for the top left corner of that island. The top left corner is what you're gonna run into. We would do that DFS 
and we're not going to do it again. That would greatly hurt the time complexity. So we just ignore it here. And then we're going to see this next position here. Now I'll tell you why it really truly is a DFS and not a BFS. If we were doing a BFS, what we do is we'd see this guy and then we would see this guy. And then notice this part, we would directly see in a BFS, a breadth first search, we would see this, then this, then this, because we're basically prioritizing this guy's neighbors. We would see this and then this. But in a DFS, which is what we're going to do using recursion, that is not what it's going to do. Say we went down first, and it depends how you organize the code, but say we went down first, we'd go here, we would go here, and then we'd start exhausting this guy's neighbors before this earlier guy's one. It's a depth first search, and so we're prioritizing depth. So we'd actually see this one first, because he's connected to him, and then through this guy, we are then going to see this neighbor, and it would kind of backtrack through, and we'd see all of our neighbors. It's going to be a total of, we would see five nodes, and that is the result that we're going to return. Okay, so we can calculate M is equal to just the length of the grid, because that's how many rows we have, the length of the grid itself. We'd get N is equal to the length of the very first part of the grid. So basically, if you take grid at zero, that's going to be this. And then we'll create our DFS function. And I'm not really going to do much with it right now. The DFS will take a position I into J, and I'm just going to write pass. It would take a position of the island. It would destroy all of that and turn it into zeros. And it would also return the value of the area. And we'll see in the code how to do that. It's really clever. I like this code a lot. Now, before we worry about that code, let's see how to use it. So we need to iterate the grid for i in the range of m, and then for each j in the range of n. So that's just going to allow us to kind of iterate over the grid, top to bottom, left to right. And we'd say if the grid at i j is equal to a 1, because we really only care about the land pieces, then we'll call our DFS function. And it's going to return the area of the island it's at. So we'll set max area to be the maximum of max area, what it was before, and the area, which is going to be DFS on ij. So this will traverse the whole island and then return the area of the island. And if that's bigger than what we saw before, then it's going to set max area to be that. So then at the end of this, we would just return our max area. Now, of course, we would need to write our DFS function, and here's how to do that. So basically, we need to make sure that the position is actually in bounds. And when we're iterating through the grid, of course, it's going to be in bounds because we're looking at the valid positions. However, we're going to basically do an offset to traverse the neighbors. And so we may actually be kind of too high, too much to the right, too much to the bottom, or too much to the left. And basically, these conditions are, well, if i is less than zero, that means that you're too high up. That's a problem. Or i is at least m. So the last valid row position is going to be m minus one. So you can't be over here. That's also out of bounds. Or very similarly, j is less than zero. That's too much to the left. Or we have that j is at least n. So your last valid column position would be n minus one. So you can't be at least n. Now, if you've bypassed all of these, we know we're actually a valid position in the grid. However, we still only care about you if you're a one. So we'll just write or the grid at ij is not equal to a one. So if it's not a one, aka it's equal to zero. Well, these are all of the different reasons why we really don't care about this position. And if we don't care about this position, well, it's a very important base case for our function that we return zero because whether you're a water in the valid position or you're out of bounds, you are worth nothing. So we need to make sure that you are worth nothing. Now this will make a lot more sense once we write this piece. So otherwise, so if we're in this else here, that means we are a valid position in the grid and we are a one. Okay, so it's actually a valid piece of land. So what does that mean? Well, we are a valid piece of land, we're worth one. So we better actually return one and then plus some recursive stuff. We'll see that later. I'm going to write that in a moment. Before we do any of the recursive stuff, we need to mark that we're now a zero. So we'll we'll set grid at ij, the position we're at, equal to a zero. Don't count us again. We're counting us here right now. So we're worth one plus the DFS on the rest of it. And that's just basically off by one positions. So we could go down, for example, DFS on i plus one and j. So that's going to be down one. We could do the DFS on left. So that's going to be i and then j minus one. So keep the row the same, move the column index left by one. We could go up DFS DFS on i minus 1 and j. And finally, let me get a little bit more room here, DFS on i and j plus 1. And actually, sorry, you just need to set max area to equal 0.
zero here, that's going to initialize the variable. And then this is what we needed. So this code is going to work. And let's talk about time and space complexity. Now, if we're iterating through this entire grid of basically m times n things, well, then the time complexity will be at least big O of m times n. However, we're also doing a DFS, but that's actually okay because for all of the positions in the grid here, we'll do an extra DFS where, but say for example, we saw this piece right here. Well, that'd be marked as a zero. This will be marked as a zero and all of these will basically from the DFS starting at this point. And so as we're iterating, we see, you know, this position here, we're not going to do that DFS again. We kind of just ignore the position. So essentially what we're doing is kind of O of M times N times two. You're kind of iterating through the grid and then you'll also potentially kind of visit all the stuff again via a DFS. But uh, that's not going to add to the overall time complexity. It's just kind of another iteration through the grid potentially. And so the overall is M times N. And the space complexity here, the recursive call stack takes up space. It's a little hard to calculate with the fact that there's kind of four directions here, uh, but roughly the space complexity, it could also take kind of M times N many things held in the recursive call stack. Okay, so here's the whole code here, guys. Drop a like if this was helpful and have a great day. Bye-bye.